All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to host a website, IPFS. Hopefully, if you're watching this, you have a little bit of familiar, familiar, familiarity with IPFS or the Interplanetary File System. If not, you can go back and watch one of my intro videos or just look on YouTube. You'll find lots of cool introductions to explain what it is and what it does. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be learning how to add directories to IPFS how to access those files with a gateway, how to get an IPNS peer ID, how to update your pages, and how to make uh, pretty URLs. So this video assumes you already have IPFS installed and the daemon is running in the background or in another tab, whatever it's running. Um, in this tutorial, we're gonna be using an IPFS gateway. It's gonna allow us to easily get files through a web browser. And we are going to be using this gateway.ipfs.io. We should address the fact that uh, static content versus dynamic content. This tutorial, this tutorial won't be very useful if you want to try to deploy like a Drupal site or WordPress or Wiki, Wiki, like your Wikipedia version, whatever, like Wikimedia. Um, we can't really do dynamic content like that on IPFS right now. Um, we can do things like, you know, JavaScript libraries or um, sites that are generated through a static, static site generator, like maybe Jekyll or Pelican or Hugo, any of those static site generators, those will be perfect for IPFS, but things like WordPress, it's not going to work. You're going to have, a, it's not going to work. So let's get started right away. We're going to get a extremely simple web page going. It is just a hello world, h1 hello world. And we're going to create a directory called site. We're going to add that little file into there. And we're going to add the directory to IPFS. So it's going to be IPFS add dash R site name of the directory. And that's going to add it. It's going to give us our little hashes for that. Um, the dash R is for um, adding directories recursively. We really aren't dealing with that because we have a, we've got a directory with one single file in there. It's not very complex, but it's what you should be doing. So we're going to go, actually we're going to look for it. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to use this uh, gateway.ipfs.io. And we got slash IPFS, and then you give it that hash value, and it should boom. There you go. So if you were to go to that link, you will see this magnificent handcrafted web page that says "Hello World." So that works. Um, we want to modify that HTML. So now we're going to add a little p paragraph with just "I like pie." Who doesn't like pie? I like pie. Um, and we're going to go there again. And hey, what happened? Okay. I'll tell you what happened. Um, the hash is the same hash. We're reusing that same hash from the old file. And if you remember from other tutorials about IPFS, the files are immutable. They can't be changed. Um, and we changed a file. Uh, so what do we, what do we, we have to add the directory again. It's going to give us a new hash or a new address. All right. So different files have different hashes. Our hashes are where we get our addresses from. So that's why that file didn't change is because that file is immutable. It can't change. If you want to change it, it's going to have a different name or a different address or a different hash. Um, when we modify, the, when we modify the file, the hash changed and yes, we, we covered this. It's, I'm, once again, I'm getting ahead of my slides. I'm trying to get ahead of my slides. Um, so this is going to be a problem. Um, every time we change a file, the address changes. It's going to be really terrible for a uh, web page. Just imagine the uh, front page of your average blog. It changes every single time you add an article. Um, that, that it would be really weird. You wouldn't ever be able to actually have a front page to your website because that address would change every single time. That's that's a big problem. Um, that's where we get into IPNS, the Inter Interplanetary Naming System gonna help us make things a little bit better. It's gonna give us one address. It's gonna basically refer to other content. May sound confusing, but it's a workaround. So I show you what the problem is. This is the solution. Right now, don't worry about how it works. It's just pretend it's magic right now. Um, just so you get the feel of things. It's not magic. Trust me, it's not magic. Um, okay, so um, we have the hash of our directory, the address that we were using earlier. We're gonna say IPFS name publish, and then we're going to give it that address and it's going to do some thinking and then it's going to give you your IPNS or your peer ID. So it's going to want this right here, rather long. looks very similar to the addresses you get for individual files, but this is specifically for IPNS. 
right, so let's go there. Dun, dun, hopefully it works. It feels once again like this is kind of like live coding. Um, one thing you should note, and we'll go back here while that's trying to do its thing. It was working. Um, is that this address earlier, we'll, we'll jump ahead one more slide. So this is the um, way it looks is it's gateway.ipfs.io. Yeah, IPFS, and then you have the hash value. With IPNS, it's IPNS. Hopefully that's not too obvious or too confusing because it's so obvious. It's just different ways of addressing that, okay? So here we go. This is our hello world um, with I like pi. So it did eventually load from our IPNS address. Um, so we're gonna modify the HTML again. Actually, I think this is, I didn't run it again, so well, you're just going to have to bear with me. <laughs> um, I should have done another take with this. Okay, so uh, we've changed the file. We, we add it again, right? And then we get that different address, okay? And then we publish it again. And what it gives us is that same published address we got before, right? So the IPNS addresses might be changing for the IP the IPFS addresses, these acronyms, the interplanetary file system name will change when you change the file. But you can have this IPNS, the interplanetary name system, that's kind of like your domain name. That's not going to change. And you can see it's not going to, it's not going to change. Hopefully that made sense. Like, uh, yeah. So we have another problem. We'll move on quickly. Um, the problem is that this is ugly. Look at this URL. Do you really want to share this with anybody? It's so long. Like you're going to just, just like, like bitly and just shorten that. It's ugly. Yeah. You paid for a domain name and you can't use it now. It's, it's all kinds of problems. So uh, we're going to be editing some DNS records. The most exciting thing in the world, isn't it? Okay. So uh, you're going to go into your DNS. You can do this with domain or a subdomain. Uh, you're going to add, go into, um, a TXT field. You're going to add this with your peer ID. This is the generic format. This is kind of like the template you use. And then this is what it looks like for me in my example here. Right? So I used, um, you can see that IPNS slash your peer ID. We add that. All right. Now, um, once again, it's like live coding. Let's see if this works. You can see it's IPNS <laughs> gateway IPFS.io slash IPNS and then my subdomain. My subdomain I chose was my name um, and then the subdomain being an IPFS. So IPFS.JasonRigdon.com. Let's see if it works. It'll be, a, it'll be, we'll see. It might work, it might not work. It might not work. Okay. It's very slow today. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Maybe we'll, we'll go back to it. Trust me, it works. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit better. Um, you know, this, this domain name is not, as ugly as this one, this one down here. That's that's pretty terrible. Let's see, did it load? Oh yeah, I did load. Okay, so I don't. You, oh, you can't see my address bar, but yes, trust me that this worked. We'll go. We'll we'll revisit it. So I'll show you. Okay, so here we go. Boom. Yeah, see, it works. All right. It takes a little bit. Um, you just have to. It's kind of like a cache. You got to kind of warm it up. Okay, so. That's better, but it's still not what I want. I really want to use my own domain name. Um, so if we want to do that, we need to edit the A record and we need to point that to an IPFS gateway. As we said earlier, we're going to be using gateway.ipfs.io and that's the IP address we want to point to. Now the moment of truth. So this is a much more pretty URL, right? We're looking at uh, ipfs.jasonrigdon.com. Oh, and it works. So if you go to that URL, I'll have this in the uh, notes at the bottom. Um, and because, I mean, you're going to want to enjoy this site. I mean, this site is beautiful. I mean, it's got pretty much Hello World and Pi, and this, do you need much more? I don't know. So that's how you uh, deploy a site um, to IPFS. In conclusion, we learned how to add directories to IPFS, how to access them with the gateway, how to get an IPNS gateway. And you heard me say IPNS and IPFS so many times, I confused myself and probably you. Um, and we talked about how to modify your uh, DNS records for an IPFS site.
Oh, we have more. Wait. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Wait. I have two conclusions somehow. Um, yes. I, oh, I have two conclusions. Yes. I'm very confused about that. I'm sorry. I probably confused you too. Um, because we, we forgot the, the better one right here. Um, we also learned how to make uh, pretty URLs. Um, now you know how to make, host a website on IPFS. There are going to be some links and other resources in the video description below. Hopefully uh, you stood by me and you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this about, um, you know, I do videos about IPFS and Python and stuff, um, then hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you probably do. I probably confused you completely. <laughs> Put those in the comments below and thank you so much for viewing.